Hello everyone. If you are planning to create some shooting game then this video is for you. First I will create a single bullet gun. Then we have a shotgun bullet which has a limited range. Then we are going to make a laser gun. And then everyone's favorite auto aiming bullet. Then we are going to create some enemy fire like this rotating pattern and bullet in all direction. Now one thing I want to tell you that in this video I am only going to make single firing gun, shotgun and laser gun. Otherwise this video will become too long. So auto aiming bullet and enemy bullet are going to be in the next video. Now before we start making bullets, let's first make the player that will fire it. For that, create a new scene and name it player. Then add your player sprite under it. Now we are going to add a position 2D node. It will just represent the position from where our bullet will appear. So that's all the node we need to add in the player. Here first we will create the physics process function and then we use the look at function to make our sprite rotate in the direction of the mouse position. And now we will check when we hit the space bar and then we will fire. So come here and create the fire function. Now to add a bullet to our player we first need to create it. So create a new scene and instead of regular node we will add area 2D node. I have seen many people using rigid body or kinematic body for the bullets. But these are physics body which means it will use all the physics calculation that are built in in these bodies. So I use a simple area 2D node for the bullet. Now add a sprite node under it and set your bullet image. Then create a collision ship and cover the entire sprite. Also add a visibility notifier node so that we can delete our bullet once it's go outside of the screen. Here we need two variables, one is direction and second one is the speed. By default the direction is set to right and the speed is set to 400. Now in the process function we will use the translate function to move the bullet. This translate function is similar to the move and slide function that you have used in the kinematic bodies. Now in this translate function we will pass direction, speed and delta. Also we are going to normalize the direction so that we only get the direction not the magnitude. Now we are going to connect the body entered signal from the area 2D node and also connect the screen exit signal from the visibility notifier so that when we go out of the screen we can delete the bullet and when we detect some physics body then we can do some damage to it. For example let's suppose the body has a function take damage so you can call it here using the body variable that you get and at last we will delete the bullet. Our bullet is not ready. Now go back to the player script and at the top preload the bullet scene. By doing that we have a variable that contains the reference of the bullet scene. And now coming to the fire function we first create the instance of the bullet then we have the direction variable that we just created in the bullet script and set it to the position of position to denote minus our own global position. By doing this we get a vector from our position to the position 2D node. This is how you create a vector between two points in mathematics. After setting the direction we set the bullet position to our own global position. And at last we get the tree then go to the roots and then add the bullet in game. And we have created the single bullet gun. Now just go to your main scene and add the player in it. And now when you run it you will see that the player is looking at the mouse position and when we press the spacebar, it is firing bullet and everything is working fine. After creating the single bullet gun, let's create shotgun that will fire multiple bullet and it disappear after a short range. For that, we need to create more position nodes. So I'm going to create two more of them and just separate each of them a little bit. Now we can create a variable fire type here and one will mean single bullet and two means shotgun. So in the fire function we check if the fire type is 1 so we put the current code inside the if fire type 1 condition and if the fire type is 2 then we will do the same thing for other position node as well. So let me just copy this and paste it 2 times. We need to change the variable from bullet to bullet 2 everywhere. After that we calculate the new direction from the second position 2D node and also set the position to the second position 2D node. We are going to do the same thing one more time for the third node as well. Now just change bullet 3 everywhere then calculate the distance from the third position 2D node and in the end set the position to the third one. Now if you set your fire type to 2 and play the game then you see that it is firing 3 bullets but it is not stopping after some distance and just keep going on. So for that we just need to go back to the bullet scene and here we are going to create a shotgun variable and set it to false by default. Now we need to add a timer node in the bullet and after adding it connect its timer signal to the script. Now in the process function we check if this is the shotgun bullet or not and inside it we start a timer for 0.2 seconds and set the shotgun to false again so that we don't start the timer again. And once the timer is ended we will delete the bullet. And we are done here. Now coming back to the player scene when we are setting our bullet we need to make the shotgun variable to true for each of them. 
and if you run your game now, you will see that it's working fine. Now if you are only going to use 3 point, then there is no problem, you can skip this section and go to the next one. But if you are going to add more points, then you need to watch this. You may have noticed that in the player script, we are writing almost the same thing, just 1, 2 and 3 are different. But let's suppose you have 10 points, then writing the same thing 10 time is very frustrating. So now we are going to generalize it. For that, I am going to delete all of that and we first create two variables, array and times. You will see the use of time in a minute. Now if the fire type is 1, then we will make the array to hold one variable and also set the times to 2. And if the fire type is 2, then we will make the array to hold three variables and set the times to 4. Now after all this, we will create a loop that goes from 1 to times. Now you see for the normal bullet, times is 2, so loop will run only once. But for the shotgun, times is 4, so that it will run 3 times, 1, 2 and 3. So here we first create the instance and store it to the array. I am doing i-1 because loop is running from 1 to times minus 1. Then we refer to the correct position to denote. Then we get the correct position to denote by using this i variable. You remember that this i variable is going to be 1, 2 and 3. So this represent position 2d 1, 2 and 3 respectively. Now just make sure that the name is same and you have 1, 2, 3 in the last. Now after that we set the global position according to the point. And then we check if fire type is 2, then we turn on the shotgun variable of the bullet. And finally at the last we will add the bullet to the scene. And we are all done. So now if you want to add 10 points, then you just need to create 10 null element in the array. And also you have to change the time variable accordingly. Now here comes the third kind of gun, which is my favorite, the laser gun. Now I am not going to create the entire laser from scratch, because I just created this laser recently for my Tesla gun video. So if you haven't watched it, then you must go and watch it. So as you can see, I have added the laser scene, the script and the images that I used here. Also you can see it is the same laser script that I made in that video. Now coming back to the player scene, add this laser scene under it and just place it wherever you like. Then for now you need to disable it and also turn off the visibility because we are going to change it from the script. So in the script, we are going to create a separate function for the laser. So now whenever we are firing the laser, we first enable it and set the visibility to true. So now when we are pressing the spacebar, we have to check if fire type is 1 or 2 then we are going to call the normal fire function. And if the fire type is 3 which means laser then we are going to call the laser function. Now we also need to know when we are stop pressing the spacebar so that we can turn off the laser. Now also make sure that the fire type is 3 and then we will disable the laser and hide it again. Now just go up and change the fire type to 3 and run the game. And we are done with the laser as well. So that's all the gun for this video. Now while implementing these gun in your game, don't forget to set the collision layer and collision mask for each of them according to your game. Now in the next video, I will create auto aiming bullet and enemy bullet pattern. So subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified for my next video. And if you have any doubt, write down in the comment section and I will try to solve it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.